I've heard in many different videos on many different channels here on YouTube a common myth spread about the death of Superman. The majority of the most popular comic book YouTubers are guilty of spreading this myth. Today, we're going to dive into the idea of Superman's healing coma and its origins. Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. In December of 1992, a team of artists and writers, which included Dan Jurgens, Roger Stern, Louis Simonson, Jerry Ordway, Carl Kessel, and editor Mike Carlin, began developing a multi-title crossover, which introduced the world to the creature known as Doomsday, and showed the world that a Superman could die. The story lasted until October of 1993, and was separated into three parts. Doomsday, Funeral for a Friend, which is also known as A World Without Superman, and Reign of the Supermen. When news broke that DC planned to kill off Superman, it gained unprecedented mainstream media coverage. It was so popular that in 2007, a loose adaptation was created by Warner Brothers Animation, entitled Superman Doomsday. A second and more faithful adaptation was developed in 2018, entitled The Death of Superman, with a sequel, The Reign of the Superman, to be released in early 2019. The myth of Superman's healing coma was actually introduced by fans as a way to cope with him returning during the reign of the Superman. This was later used as a plot device to explain his return in Superman Doomsday. However, in the comics, the idea of a Kryptonian healing coma was actually just a question by Superman himself to the Eradicator in Superman number 82, which was the conclusion to Reign of the Superman. In the comic, Superman says, But I wasn't dead. I was just in kind of a coma or something, right? To which the Eradicator responds with, Thoughts such as those may comfort you, but you must understand, you were categorically deceased Kal-El. In the reign of the Superman story, which started off in Funeral for a Friend, the last son of Krypton turned out to be the disembodied Kryptonian AI, the Eradicator, who on discovering that Superman was dead attempted to enter and steal Superman's body, which had, due to its Kryptonian physiology, remained intact. However, Superman's soul had returned to the body, and the Eradicator placed the Kryptonian regeneration matrix in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. He then created a new flawed body to inhabit, the Matrix restored Superman to health, but not to full power. Soon after, the Eradicator used the Regeneration Matrix himself, destroying it. In The Adventures of Superman, number 692, Lois questions whether Clark is immortal, leading supernatural detective Dr. Occult, who actually debuted in the exact same issue of Action Comics number 1 as Superman, to tell them that Superman definitely died. In 2001, the miniseries Dead Man, Dead Again featured Dead Man, a ghostly superhero, attempting to stop Darius Caldera, a wizard who uses souls, and Neron, a demon, from collecting the souls of dead heroes to perform a ritual. In it, they attempted to capture Superman's soul when he died, but captured Dead Man instead. During 2009's company-wide crossover event, Blackest Night, Necron was able to convert any hero or villain who had ever died even if they came back to life into Black Lanterns. Superman became a Black Lantern during Blackest Night number 5. By releasing a Black Lantern ring from the Black Lantern central power battery, Necron resurrects a clone of Batman who spits out Black Lantern rings while Necron explains that he was behind every resurrection, and they are still connected to him. Superman, Kid Flash, Superboy, Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, Animal Man, and Ice are transformed into Black Lanterns, with Barry and Hal fighting away the rings. The first part of the Death and Return of Superman story, known as Doomsday, ran in Action Comics number 684, The Adventures of Superman number 497, Justice League America number 69, Superman the Man of Steel number 18 through 19, Superman number 74 and 75. 
while Funeral for a Friend, also known as A World Without Superman in Collected Editions, ran in Action Comics number 685 and 686, The Adventures of Superman number 498 through 500, Justice League America number 70, Superman number 76, 77, and number 83, and Superman the Man of Steel number 20 and 21. While the reign of the Superman ran in Action Comics number 687 through 691, The Adventures of Superman number 501 through 505, Green Lantern number 46, Superman number 78 through 82, and Superman the Man of Steel number 22 through 26. Later, in the Superman Doomsday Hunter Prey miniseries, the impact dying at the hands of the monster had on Superman was described as he was constantly haunted by recurring nightmares, waking up in cold sweats knowing that he had died. So there you have it my friends, the myth that Superman didn't actually die during the death of Superman storyline, but was in a Kryptonian healing coma has been put to rest. Multiple comics, including Reign of the Superman, which actually proved that Superman died after all. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, my friends. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, you can check out one of these two playlists right here on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched.